You may or may not be aware of this, but there are absolutely massive rumblings going on in the world of science today. And we're not just talking about a minor squabble, but what amounts to being a second Copernican revolution, which was one of the major contributions to the overall scientific revolution in the first place. Well, when I first left school in the early 70s, I went straight into commercial art. But since getting out of advertising in the late 80s, I've expanded my creative portfolio across many other fields. And this has included writing a monthly blog, which deals with all sorts of different subjects, including what is going on out in outer space, as well as what is happening here on the planet. So I came across the electric universe purely by chance when researching other material. I came across a space news video and thought, whoa, this is new to me. So I watched it. I was literally quite shocked as it instantly made sense to me. After then, watching another couple of videos that followed, I knew that I'd never go back to the old way of seeing how the universe ever worked again. I then basically, over the next couple of days um, or so, w watched every video on YouTube, um, on, on, your, on the uh, Thunderbolts channel. I had followed all the various space shots since I was a kid in the 60s, but I've always had a massive interest in science, generally, with physics in particular. And at school, I learned the basics of electricity, electronics, like what a capacitor is, and that electricity needed to travel in circuits. So I basically could see pretty instantly what was being said uh, was a lot better for explanation of reality, rather than the contorted mathematical guesswork being spouted by the mainstream with all its mysticism and undetectable objects. Coming originally from the world of advertising and communication, it seemed to be ingrained in my blood, uh, having worked in it you know, since I was 16, and because I've always wanted to see how the universe really worked, the two have inevitably come together, intertwined, and become a bit like a Berkman current, really. So I can't see that stopping until I get, well, taken to my grave, really. As a uh, dyslexic autodidact, I have always found looking at visual images while listening to a clear, rational, and logical commentary far easier to learn by. And after tracking down various other uh, group pages on Facebook and putting my two pennies worth in on various posts and plus posting new topics for discussion, I thought with my natural um, irreverent attitude and natural writing style based on uh, North London satire, I thought there was room for yet another group, uh, and so I set, set about grand setting it up, really. Uh, but as well as being informative, I always I also wanted to try and make it entertaining and fun as well. So it naturally became an extension to my blog, but rather than conveying loads of subjects like the blog, it was designed to purely teach and discuss the electric universe theory. But to also stop unwanted spoilers and mischief makers distracting others from learning. So I put up a simple set of guidelines in the pin post for the group and anyone who doesn't adhere to them quickly gets removed. I'm pleased to say that there hasn't been too many people that I've had to actually get rid of, but basically communicating through one type of creative process or another is what has always driven me and still does. I also love going for long walks in nature with some friends and sometimes their dogs, and especially if there's a pub at the end of it. <laughs> Of course, we can only in the time available for this video scratch the surface of the overwhelming evidence that has been collated over the many decades. But it will show how very far away from reality the standard model is. The great concern to me now is how different governments and even individual companies are trying to manipulate the other for their own benefits and seemingly doing so without any knowledge 
uh, that we live in a, the dialectic part of a capacitor between the two poles of the ionosphere and the ground. And because they seem to be spraying so many particles called climate engineering, solar management, all the different terms they use, it is literally putting metal particulates into the dielectric atmosphere and, and making artificial discharge channels. And I believe this is why we're getting start really adding to the extreme weather events we get, like, like the rain bombs and the, and the really heavy hurricanes and, and tornadoes.